This is Mumbai, India's financial capital as of today. And this will be Mumbai if the sea levels rise by 1 meter under a high emission scenario by the turn of the century. Home to more than 20 million people, Mumbai is India's most populous city. So, when I went to the boat, I was lost. I was completely lost. If this continues, this is what I'm doing in one year. I don't have to wait for five years. I'm already bankrupt and I'm already leaving everything. My dad had dengue after, he had lepro after. The kind of diseases that happen just staying in that water. But these 20 million lives are under threat. Code red for humanity. The sea level has risen by 20 centimeters already. The danger of the sea level has risen by 20 centimeters already. Mumbai is going to be in the city. Sea level rise is putting Mumbai's survival at risk. We'll explain how it got here, but first, a lesson in history. The present-day city of Mumbai was built over a span of 400 years from seven small islands. Bombay, Parel, Mazgao, Worli, Kolaba, Mahim and the Old Woman's Island. The early city of Bombay grew through reclamation of land from the sea. This, along with the suburbs which came later, formed the metropolitan city of Mumbai or the capital of Maharashtra. I'm standing at the Gateway of India, which is not just one of Mumbai's most iconic monuments, but also the port from where the city grew and spread. But do you know that the Gateway is also on a list of places in Mumbai which might go underwater over the next 100 years because of rising sea levels? But how did we ever get to this? What is sea level rise? Hota kya hai? And who are the people it's impacting? To find answers to all of these questions, we went to IIT Bombay and met with climate scientists at the cutting edge of research. Let us first understand why the sea level rises. So we have a lot of emissions of greenhouse gases and aerosols pumped into the atmosphere, which is essentially causing the Earth's temperature to rise. And as the temperature rises, there is thermal expansion of water, which is why the level of the sea is coming up. Now you also have a lot of uh, ice melting because of the rising in rises in temperature. So all of that is also contributing to sea level rise. Now add to this factors like unplanned urbanization, destruction of swamps and coastal areas and an overburdened drainage system. And the threat to Mumbai becomes very, very real. <laughs> उस दिन जो तूफान आया, पूरे महाराष्ट्र के किनारे मचवारे लोग की परेशानी बढ़ गई एकदम से। Alauddin Khan is one of the five lakh fishermen of Mumbai who live by the coast to make a living. But in May 2021, when cyclone Tote hit the shores of the city, his life changed forever. तूफान के अंदर जब मेरा बोट चला गया, नष्ट हो गया। बारह तेरह दिन के बाद एक ऐसा सोने लगा कि साला मैं पूरी तरह से टूट गया। मैं बच्चों को पढ़ाऊँगा कैसा, लिखाऊँगा कैसा। उस वक्त एक ऐसा दिल हो रहा था कि मैं पूरे परिवार को लेकर आत्महत्या करूँ। we met Alauddin at the Lotus Jetty near the Haji Ali Darga and this is where the sea engulfed his boat. Yes, sir. 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 Compared to the Sea of Bengal to the east, cyclones are uncommon in the Arabian Sea. But that is changing. Unfortunately, this cyclone will not be the last. A study published by Indian scientists in 2021 reveals that the number of cyclones in Arabian Sea went up by 52% between 2001 and 2019. And the number of very severe cyclonic storms, like the one which destroyed Alauddin's boat, went up by a massive 150%. Currently, when we talk, there are cyclones which are coming along the east coast of India, which usually receives more number of cyclones. But 
in the context of global warming and increasing temperature and ocean heat content it is expected that number of cyclones are going to be more in the arabian sea study after study is indicating that the timeline for mumbai to go under water might move to 2050 as the global temperatures continue to rise So this is a fishing village and that's a Karanja port separately for commercial only. An ocean lover, a sustainability champion and founder of Blue Catch Seafoods, Ganesh Nakhawa is a seventh generation Kohli fisherman. He daddy log teen boat banaya tha 94 mein. The Kohli community is the native fishing community of Mumbai, also known as the first inhabitants of the island. Ye yeah, hamara family sign hai elephant. Every boat has elephant. तब से 1930s, 40s से रहेगा अपू बोलते हैं वेदर बहुत अनप्रडिक्टेबल हो गया है जैसे पूरे साल में हम लोग 300 दिन फिशिंग करते थे दो दो महीना तो बंद रहता है हमको बारिश के मौसम में अगर वो 300 दिन में से 70-80 दिन या फिर अभी तो 100-100 दिन पूरा मौसम खराब रहता है और 200 दिन ही फिशिंग को मिलेगा तो हमारा एवरेज कैलकुलेशन बैठता नहीं है इसके लिए बहुत ज़्यादा लोगों को लॉस होने लगा है एंड रैपिडली पिछले दस साल में पचास टका लोग फिशिंग को छोड़ गए वारा कदा भी होते हल्ली वारा बोलू कदा भी होते हल्ली इन 2011 व्हेन गणेश क्विट हिज जॉब ऑफ एन इन्वेस्टमेंट एनालिस्ट इन स्कॉटलैंड टू रिटर्न होम टू जॉइन हिज फैमिली बिजनेस ऑफ फिशिंग लिटिल डिड ही नो दैट देयर आरंट दोस मेनी फिश लेफ्ट टू कैच सबसे बड़ा चेंज है वो फिश अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ फिश माय दादाजी हमेशा बोलते थे कि पहले एक जाली डालो तो 200-300 किलो एक टाइम में आता था अभी दो दो तीन तीन दिन भी जाओ तो 100 किलो भी नहीं फिश मिलता है इफ यू लुक एट सम ऑफ द लो लाइंग मार्सी लैंड्स दे आर गोइंग टू बी डायरेक्टली इम्पैक्टेड इफ देर इज अ सी लेवल राइज द वाटर व्हिच वाज फ्लडिंग अप टू सर्टन पॉइंट देन इट इज गोइंग टू फ्लड मोर इन डेप्थ और मोर इन लैंड एंड द फ्लोरा एंड फोना दैट वी हैड इन दोज रीजन इज गोइंग टू चेंज the plants the life marine life that we had in those marshy lands are going to change so they will possibly shift or they may disappear so there is going to be ecological impact if this continues yahi chalta raha ek do saal mein to i don't have to wait for 5 years main already bankrupt ho raha hu main already sab kuch chhod raha hu and agar tum frontliners ko hi nikal doge then who is going to protect the entire ocean Now we know that rising sea levels are a threat to coastal communities like the Kolis who depend on fishing for livelihood. But then why should the rest of us really care about it? We glad you asked because I am on my way to meet Riya Tanna, a 25-year-old sales professional who along with her family had to leave their home of 50 years in Khar, an affluent Mumbai suburb far from the coastline, courtesy annual flooding. Where I Jai Bharat Society, where I have lived for the last 24 years. This is the building where I used to live, and my parents actually have lived here for the last 50 years. So during the monsoon, about July, August, September, the water can range from up till here when it's sort of just kind of starting to take place, and when it's full fledged, it can definitely come up till here. We actually moved out two years ago uh, because the walls were electrified in my house because of the flooding, of course. Um, eventually, what happened is that the water kind of goes into the circuit, and uh, that's when the problem start sort of starts arising. A lot of the other issues also, such as like just the balcony sort of crumbling and being inhabitable to kind of use, or the grill falling down, and of course, this is not just a story of one building. This is a story of multiple buildings. um you know when you go down the lane as well climate scientists now are also studying what they call compound extreme events before you fret let me explain it basically means two extreme climate events coinciding with each other take for example sea level rise and a storm surge or sea level rise and an extreme rainfall event like what mumbai saw in july 2005 26 July 2005 we kind of lost most of our things more than anything financial loss loss of property and loss of belongings a lot of belongings and i remember fa my father not coming home that night he had to be uh, in office because it's in masjid bandar and there was no way he could make it home 
there was no electricity for uh, 26th, 27th, 28th of July, as far as I remember. My dad were, had dengue after, he had lepro after, the kind of diseases that happen just staying in that water. Uh, it's, it's very hazardous to health and, you know, uh, it, it's pretty dangerous. So you tend to not kind of be there. After that, I don't think we could live in a house. So immediately we had to kind of get the house renovated because there was just nothing to go back to. Just so you know, Mumbai's existing drainage system can handle up to 25 millimeters of rain per hour at low tide. On 26 July 2005, it rained 944 millimeters per hour and the city was paralyzed. Some of our colleagues did a study in 2010 in collaboration with OECD, which showed that the total economic impact of the 2005 floods was more than a billion dollars which includes both the formal economic sector as well as the informal economic sector, including um, fisheries, the street vendors, uh, the retail sector, everybody else. And the same study also said that uh, in case another uh, similar disaster occurs 30 years from now, the total losses will be $3 trillion. It's an exponential increase as you can see. Alauddin, Ganesh, Riya and many other people of Mumbai might be leading very different lives right now. But they're all facing the brunt of the crisis in the sea. The strength of the weather is changing and changing. One thing is that the fish are fighting with them. 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 Alauddin is part of the fish. Alauddin is talking about Maharashtra government's multi-crore coastal road project which has rendered over 15,000 fishing families homeless. Every man wants to take a good line to their children. But take a good line to the line. Take a good line to the line. Or take a good line to the project, the government scheme, take a good line to the line. The latest IPCC report says that the coastal road project is maladaptive which means that while it is aimed at reducing flood risk and protecting the city against sea level rise, it will, in fact, cause damage to intertidal fauna, flora and local fishing livelihoods. I will just say that our samundra will give us back. You know, development is coastal or deep sea. Now, you think that what will happen in deep sea? Development? You open the Google Maps. You can see what you use oil and diesel and petrol. ONGC was in the middle of the 5km area in Samundar. Today, in Bombay, there is a whole ONGC in the middle of the 250-300km area. So, what happened to that? The whole fishing ground, whether it's Maharashtra or Gujarat, it's completely shrinked. Yes, now I'm expecting questions like, how can we completely stop development work in coastal zones? Also, didn't the government come up with that ambitious Mumbai City Climate Action Plan, which is going to solve all of our climate problems? Well, you wish. To deal with Mumbai's climate crisis, the Maharashtra government in March 2022 unveiled the ambitious Mumbai City Climate Action Plan, a 240-page document and a first-of-its-kind action plan developed by a city in South Asia. The plan identifies short, medium and long-term goals to achieve zero emission of greenhouse gases or a net zero target by 2050. So the climate action plan has done a good assessment of the climate risks that Bombay faces. But what the Climate Action Plan does not do is that it does not lay out a vision of what kind of development is sustainable. So if along with a Climate Action Plan, you are also following conventional development strategies, then that is only going to lead to more risks for us. Now, we're at the famous Aksa Beach in the western suburbs of Mumbai and right behind me is the spot where a two-feet-tall anti-erosion seawall is expected to come up by the year 2023 as part of a beach redevelopment project. Now, climate scientists and experts have repeatedly warned us against these projects, saying that they defeat the purpose of sustainable development. Mumbai is running out of time. A tool developed by Climate Central, a non-profit research group states that if immediate adaptive measures are not taken, the sea will start swallowing parts of Mumbai and Navi Mumbai by as soon as 2030. It gets really uh, horrifying and you constantly, I think, somewhere you have a PTSD that like, 
ओके वॉट इफ दिस हैपन्स अगेन आई पर्सनली बिलीव अगर हम लोग कुछ नहीं कर पाएंगे तो आई विल बी द फर्स्ट पर्सन वो विल बी अफेक्टेड बाय द क्लाइमेट चेंज क्लाइमेट चेंज पहले हमको मारेगा टू सेव मुंबई फ्रॉम गोइंग अंडर वाटर साइंटिस्ट्स आर सजेस्टिंग दैट वी इंप्लीमेंट अ होस्ट ऑफ सॉल्यूशंस रेंजिंग फ्रॉम सॉफ्ट टू हार्ड मेजर्स व्हाइल हार्ड मेजर्स इंक्लूड कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर्स लाइक सी वॉल्स सॉफ्ट मेजर्स इन्वॉल्व पार्टनरिंग विद इंडिजिनस कम्युनिटीज टू बिल्ड नेचुरल बैरियर्स अलोंग द कोस्ट सो दिस इज अ प्रोजेक्ट दैट्स कॉल्ड अ टेपेस्ट्री Uh, which is sponsored by the Belmont Forum it's part of uh, something called transformation to sustainability so we're trying to find out what can be done to help them adapt so addressing issues of plastic pollution along the creeks uh, protecting the uh, coastal areas from uh, sea level rise from the water from coming in a city like no other mumbai is always bustling and moving but now it's also sinking as we prepare for another erratic monsoon we might not want to panic but we must definitely be concerned ye mumbai bandli panyavar bhumi putrancha jivavar baslai sarkar uravar bandari agri kolyavar Even as Mumbai sinks, what is it that we can do to stem the drowning? How are you and I going to contribute to saving our home? Because every step counts. Do send us your solutions at editor at the quint dot com, and we'll be happy to bring your story to the world.